Welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. A special welcome to those joining us via the Catholic Channel on Sirius XM. Today is the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and our celebrant is Archbishop Gomez. Before we begin our Mass, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. Thank you. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. And with your spirit. So today we celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and the Church is especially asking us to reflect on our missionary call, our call to be missionary disciples. So let's start our celebration acknowledging our sins and preparing ourselves to celebrate the second mystery. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
that I have really seen in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Mary God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, off with you, visionary flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, 
I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from the following of the flock and said to me, Go, prophecy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight 
he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fulfillment of times and to sum up all things in Christ into heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will so that we might exist for the praise of his glory and we who first hoped in Christ. In him you also who have heard of the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and have believed in him and were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit, which is in his first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belt. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off, and preach repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Please be seated. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters in Christ, so today we continue to pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, as he's recovering from surgery. We ask God to bring him healing and strength and help him to know our love and our closeness to him in our prayers. It is, it seems that the Holy Father is recovering well, so let, let us just keep him in our prayers in a special way during this time after he had that surgery. So our readings this morning, as I was saying before, talk to us about our vocation and mission as disciples. In the first reading, we hear about the prophet Amos, and as we heard, Amos was not always a prophet. He was just a simple, normal person, a shepherd, a gardener. He takes care of the sycamore trees. So there was nothing special about him, nothing extraordinary, just the dignity of being an ordinary worker. But Amos tells us, as we hear in the first reading of today's Mass, the Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. And we also heard the same story in the Gospel today. Our Lord sent out his apostles, the twelve, to preach. And again, of course, we know that the apostles were just ordinary men from ordinary families working ordinary jobs. They were fishermen. One of them was a tax collector. And Jesus calls them and sends them out. He gives them a mission. And one word called my attention in, uh, in today's gospel. As we hear, the gospel says, Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two. So Jesus began to send his disciples out. So our gospel today is telling us about the beginning of the church's mission. And my dear brothers and sisters, as we know, the church's mission is still going on. Jesus is still sending, sending out his disciples to spread his love, to carry his gospel to the ends of the earth. The church's mission continues in our lives. We are the disciples that Jesus is sending out now in our time and place. God is sending us out just as he sent, sent out the prophet Amos, just as he sent out the twelve apostles. He's calling each one of us to proclaim his good news to our families, to our neighborhoods, to our society. Because the mission of the church is our mission, together, all of us, you and me. Each one of us doing what God wants us to do, personally, in our own lives. And I hope that we can never forget this. The church mission is not just a responsibility for pastors or priests or religious brothers and sisters. I think that's the beautiful lesson in today's readings. Jesus calls all of us, not just a few of us, everyone. Then, so I think that's the first thing that we should reflect on today, how that missionary call was not just for some special people, but for all of us. Then it is interesting that the gospel today does not tell us where Jesus sent the twelve. But the gospel does tell us that their mission started in people's homes, in families. Uh, uh, 
Wherever you enter a house, Jesus said to them, stay there until you leave. This is our mission, my brothers and sisters. The kingdom starts in your homes, in your families. So the greatest thing that you can contribute to the kingdom of God is to make a happy home where everyone loves one another and knows and loves God. Beautiful reflection that we have to think about. Then the twelve were given special powers to work miracles of healing and to drive out demons, unclean spirits. And my brothers and sisters, our mission is, we have to say, less spectacular. It is more hidden and humble. But the true miracle is love. By the grace of God, we share the gospel by the way we love. Caring for other people, being generous and gentle, being understanding and merciful in our dealings with other people. These are the little everyday miracles that can change people's lives. This is how we help people to discover the reality and presence of God in their lives. It is also interesting that Jesus sends out his apostles today two by two. And that's a beautiful reminder that our faith is not a solitary faith. Our faith is made to live with others, to be shared. To be Christian means that our faith is lived with others in the church, in our parishes, in our homes. And as we are reflecting this morning, the kingdom grows by our friendships. And so we need to ask for the grace to be good friends to others, everywhere, in our homes, in the work we do, in our service to our neighbors. We really need to care for one another and try to bring one another closer to Christ. Yes, the gospel is the good news. It is the beautiful truth that God loves us, that he has a plan for our lives, that we can know forgiveness, and we can start our, our lives all over again. So we should be very happy, joyful, cheerful. We should proclaim the gospel with love in our hearts and a smile on our face. So, Let's reflect on this beautiful missionary call that we all have this coming week. Let us ask for the grace today to proclaim Jesus by the way we live, in little ways, showing the love of God to the people in our lives. Let us especially ask Mary, our Blessed Mother, to help us to follow her Son and to share His love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand for a profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made, for us men and for us salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we gather strength from the example of Jesus and his disciples. As a people of faith, we join together to ask the Father's help and to bring him all our needs. That all members of the Church may be strengthened by the Spirit to be ever faithful to their baptismal calling to proclaim Christ to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God. That bishops, priests, and deacons may continue to lead us to encounter with God in the scriptures and in the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord that world leaders may recognize God as the source of true authority and may seek mercy and freedom for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our That the church may preach with compassion the need of repentance from all sins against life and point the way to a new reverence for those who are poor, weak, unwanted, and unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our That those who have died may have peace and joy in the presence of God, whom they served on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our God, God our Father, as we bring you these petitions, grant that we may grow in appreciation of the beauty and wonder of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We are called to do the will of God, to act at a moment's notice and not be distracted by the things in life we think we need. Please take a moment to reflect on the blessings received this past week. Those joining virtually may donate by going to the link that appears on your screen. Those present will have an opportunity after Mass to place your donations in the baskets located at the exits of the cathedral. Thank you for your generosity.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is true, right and just, our dear and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you lay the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are in the whole, O Lord, and all you, have created, all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts, brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body 
and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the seven passion of your Son, his run the resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose day you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Viviana, and with all the saints, whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command of form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, though we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord of Christ, give me sake for eternal life. Oh God, our shield, look. 
look on the face of your anointed. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, singing your praise. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere the threshold of the house of God. I prefer to the dwellings of the wicked. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, singing your praise. For the Lord God is a son, a shield, the Lord will give us his favor and glory. He will not withhold any good to those who walk without blame. O Lord of hosts, how blessed is the man who trusts in you. Blessed are they dwell in your house singing your Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Next Sunday, July 18th, a second collection will be taken at all masses to help support the missionary efforts of Father Edward Leonhaus from the Diocese of Qatar, located on the southernmost tip of the Indian Peninsula. Our donations will help provide the means for Father to upgrade St. Mary's Elementary and Middle School. We thank you in advance for your generosity. And at this time, I would invite anyone who's visiting the cathedral this morning for the very first time 
If you would please stand so we could extend a special welcome to you. So all who visit for the first time, welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. Now, please stand for the final blessing. <clears throat> so I hope that we uh, continue to reflect on the uh, call that we have, our missionary call, uh, thinking of how Jesus began to send out his disciples. And he's continuing to send all of us out to uh, bring the beautiful news of his life and, uh, and uh, gospel to the people of our time. Especially important as we prepare for the uh, Jubilee year that we are going to have here in the Archdiocese, to celebrate the 250th anniversary of the first parish of the Archdiocese, uh, Mission San Gabriel. And it is our, jo our joy to be continuing that beautiful mission that started 250 years ago. Got to get ready for the next 250 years. So let's keep reflecting on that. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you, and in his kindness pour out upon you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to his words, that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right, and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands, made co heirs with the, the citizens of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I hope that you accompany us singing the Salve Regina to our Blessed Mother, asking for vocation to the priesthood and the consecrated life. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita dulcedo, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filii eve. A te suspiramus, gementes et ventes, in hoc lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, in os tuos misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. It is un benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis, Post hoc exilium, post 